All right, I'm going to start by showing you a few websites that will help you. The first one I'd like to point out is this one here, dishpointer.com. And what this is, you enter your address here at the top. It will work for Canada, United States. Just enter your full address or your zip code or postcode should work. And it uses Google Maps and it will tell you your latitude and longitude here at the bottom of the screen. Now, if you're in the eastern part of the hemisphere, you'll be able to get all these satellites. But for most people probably watching this video are probably in North America. So the satellites they'll be looking for is like, because we're doing a motor, you find here where your motor true south is. So you can see that there's a green line there. The interesting thing too with this, if you're pointing at a satellite that's out of your range, it will be a red line to indicate the line of sight. If you click on this little tab here, it'll tell you your latitude and longitude. Those are important things to have when you're entering in your USALs on your satellite receiver so that it can automatically track the geostationary arc. In some areas, there are satellites that are to west for you to get, so that will it'll get that red line. It's get Sat Finder, which is a free app that you can get on the Google Play Store, probably uh, available on iOS as well and uh, this website of themselves have an app called dish pointer but it's a pay app there is a free app sat finder it does the same thing actually works exactly the same except there's ads so as you can see here if you're tracking the arc and you want to see if there's any buildings or trees that might be blocking your line of sight this is a great tool to have actually several sites you can go find out uh, your satellite channels and transponders one site is sat hint which we're going to look at there's also linksat and tvrosat.com all have uh, satellite chart charts and they keep you up to date on the latest channels that come and go on the satellite chart just going to take a quick look at galaxy 19. you might look at the satellite charts and see this there's some satellites that have four digits for the frequency that those are c-band so i'm just going to scroll down here because i'm doing a ku band dish so you can see these channels here that have um, five digits vertical or and then there's the symbol right right there so you enter your frequency and the polarization which would be either hor horizontal or vertical there <laughs> fitted it through i'm so smart this will tell me my elevation angle my latitude i you need to calculate is your d inclination angle so you take your latitude so you'll enter on your motor part your latitude, which is 44.2, uh, you'll be able to adjust your de inclination angle. And to calculate that, you go to the de inclination angle table. So I'm at 44, we'll just say 44. So since I'm at 44, my angle should be my elevation angle, which is 44, this minus this, 6.07. So let's go to the old calculator here. To get in a calculator, 607 equals 38.59 so that's what my d inclination angle is so you still set your angle on your motor to this and then you set your d inclination angle to whatever this is minus that i know why don't they just say do that for you and then just tell you what you should should be but so that's where your d inclination angle should be what i ended up doing was it was hard to read each little dot on my uh on my actual dish part because I've just adjusted it so many times. I just basically made sure I got it as close as what I could see it and I may, may have adjusted it a hair or two because I couldn't see exact the exact angle but I was able to get even with like a little bit of free play I was able to get uh, most of the satellites and then just fine tune it to get the whole tra geostationary arc. And what I did here is I got this set up just right and to find my true south, what I did was I entered the USALs on the satellite, drove it out to 87 west, which I had a few channels scanned in, and just loosened off this and then just moved the dish until I was able to receive 87 west, uh, the Florida channel, which is a strong tra transponder, and the LPBS channels. So I locked onto those, and then as soon as I locked onto those with the USALs, I was able to receive the other other uh, satellites on the arc. And, in, and the interesting thing is there is other satellites that had transponders, but the ones that I had scanned in, even though it was about maybe like nine degrees or something, uh, something like nine degrees off of where my true south was, I was still able to lock it and then able to lock onto the geostationary arc. So you just want to tighten this. Now, one thing that will be a factor is when you do loosen this, this will be off by a little bit. But once you tighten it up, 
you should be able to adjust that and you should be able to get the uh, the full arc of your geostationary satellites. So a big thing with your SL setting is make sure you got a transponder that you know that there's something live on it. That's where you check out the sathint.com website or tvrosat.com. Your settings are to SLs or dissect 2, dissect 1.2. The only thing with dissect 1.2, you'll have to manually enter each point where you want your satellite to go, which I used to do that all the time now, but now that I got the SLs working, I'm going to probably stick with that but if you need to move your dish maybe like a hair maybe your dish gets blown out and on a cold day you can always go to dissect drive your dish to where you can lock the signal and do it that way so i'll talk in my amsr voice while i have the man the legend bob ross give his tutorial for his painting so here on the sad hero you can see the signal quality that i'm getting an 8.7 db on the dish this is of the pbs mux over on 87 west that I was able to lock and i can move the dish by going to Galaxy 19 and it will say dish moving. It's going to move it over to a smart lifestyle. So there's smart lifestyle over on Galaxy 19. And it just takes a few seconds for the dish to move over once you have it all set up. With each satellite, you will have to set the uh, motor type to SLs instead of DISEC 1.2 for that reason that it will lock in. So if your dish is not moving there, make sure that you do have each satellite with the motor type settings set up for us all. The dish won't move very much uh, if you're going to go to the next satellite over. So I'm on 97 West right now, and I'm just going to go over to 99 West to show you how much it, it moves when it's just moving one satellite over. So if I'm here, it's hard to see in this in this glare. Go to 99. So that, so that's all it needed to do for uh, moving over to 99 West. So I'll drive from 99, go over 97 west to 95K. So that's all it moved to go two satellites over from 99 west to 95 west. On this receiver, it's a little bit slow. That's why I don't think these things are the greatest for testing for signals. They're good for running the motor. The battery in this was powerful enough for this handheld to do it. My sat here, I need to plug in into the wall because the battery was not powerful enough to move the dish because it kept saying LMB error. So if I were to send it over to 87 west from 90, uh, from 90, if I was on 95 west, I want to go to 87 west, which I want to see if Ring of Honor is going to be on on a Monday or Tuesday. So there it is there. Please check out freesatellitetv.net and also check out the new shop where you can order free satellite TV, LMBs, receivers, and dishes, all sorts of things for your free to air needs over at the freesatellitetv.net shop. If you wanna watch a streaming service and you're in a country like Canada, certain programs are region blocked so you can't get it, you can use Express VPN if you have a cell phone. So if you use public Wi-Fi, you tell it which uh, area you wanna to connect to in New York City, connect. So if you're using public Wi-Fi at Walmart, a restaurant, you really should be using a VPN. It will protect your private data and also it saves you a lot of money. It's a fraction of the cost of what a cell phone data plan is these days. Please check out my YouTube channel, Robbie Strike, and check out all the technology videos and reviews that I've done covering satellite, free to air, cell phone, how to do stuff in Linux, how to do stuff in shortwave and old technology and doing neato things with computers.